up, everybody? This is Brian and Karen over here at the Little Orchard Farm. And yes, indeed, sometimes she does wet her plants. Whew, sounds like a personal problem to me. All right, so, man, we got so much going on this weekend. I wanted to share with you, yesterday, uh, John came out. John is a good buddy that has helped me do several activities on the cabin uh, over the course of this year plus as we've built our, our you know our cabin from the ground up he has come out to help in a couple of things well this time he came out yesterday and we knocked out the fascia now the fascia board is a is an aesthetic it, it serves two functions number one uh, it's a protectant against the water coming off the drip off the roof line dripping back underneath and potentially rotting out the the porch uh, some of the uh, banding around the porch or whatnot, but it's all it's also aesthetic. It gives a nice clean look to your roof line and The face is two parts. Uh, it's a board So you've got the hard board that you put up there and then you come back and you wrap that with an aluminum wrap um, um, Kind of a, like an aluminum siding kind of a deal, but it 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 is uh, it is what gives it the longevity, right? I mean, it's a metal, just like the metal roofing, metal fascia gives it nice longevity. So I wanted to run a little bit of a, a quick clip of showing you what John and I was doing yesterday, just to give you an idea on what it looks like. It looks phenomenal. And then we're gonna jump into the garden because we I wanna see if um, if our cabbage worm issue is being resolved. Let's see. First of all, enjoy the video of us doing the fascia. Today, today we are going to be working on the uh, the fascia of the cabin. As you can see, we've got this white aluminum that goes up and then nothing. And it's, it's also the same down the sides. Well, today John is coming out. And John, you've seen John before in several of our videos. He's helped build a couple of elements of the, of the, uh, uh, of the cabin that Karen and I were probably a little too scared to do. Well, he's here and he's going to, um, he's going to assist in bending and installing the fascia for us today. And so super excited about that. We got several things that we want to share with, uh, with you that's going on this weekend. But this is a good one to get started with. Let's do this. <laughs> Something.
All right, so just to give you an idea of what we're actually doing out here and putting the fascia board up. So first of all, we're actually installing the, the actual fascia board itself, sliding it up underneath the drip edge. You can, you can barely see it, but there's a little green drip edge up there. Um, and so we sliding it up underneath that and then, uh, and then we're coming back and covering that with the aluminum uh, fascia uh, material. And, and we're, we're making a really good time. Um, uh, obviously the design of this is to keep water from uh, coming back up underneath uh, the, uh, the porch and, and, and essentially dripping back to the underneath portion here and, and rotting out your wood. So by adding this little drip edge up underneath here, then you get water that comes down and immediately falls off. It doesn't actually roll back um, and drip or saturate the wood underneath. So that's the final piece. That's the final piece. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Don't fall. Not misplaced, don't worry. Oh, look at that fit. Look at that fit. You. Absolutely, look at that. Look how nice this looks now. You can now see a nice white trim that goes all the way around the cabin. Again, one of those things that aesthetically just changes the whole dynamic of the cabin. And when we come back in, we'll do some painting on the cabin that will fade right into the rest of the white that we're gonna trim out and, and uh, paint the cabin with. And uh, it's gonna look great. And it gives that extra layer of protection that's needed from the rains and the storms. So, all done with that. Well, all right, what did you think about that? Didn't that fascia come out just awesome? Man, it was, it just, it, it's such a game changer. It makes the cabin, it begins to pull it together. As we, um, as we look to paint the cabin, as well as stain the, uh, the upper and, bo and bottom part of our porches, you're gonna see that that white fascia, that trim, that nice, beautiful, clean white trim is gonna absolutely make this thing look gorgeous. I mean, I'm so excited about it. Uh, we're gonna be getting into the painting of our cabin in the weeks to come, but, uh, but that was a huge piece. That was a massive piece. The next couple of pieces will be things like wrapping our beams and getting those getting those ready um what else are we talking about uh yeah then i mean really man it's it's getting down to the actual painting of the cabin and um yeah that'll be an awesome that'll be an awesome time well for the, the the thing here in the garden that uh that that we wanted to look to see was if the if the cabbage worms were um were still fairly prevalent throughout and i actually see one right here although is that the only one that's no, there's two back here. because of the because of the amount of rain that we've had when we spray uh when we put on the bt or when we spray our neem oil uh because of the heavy amount of rain that we're getting it's uh it's it's it may be washing it off i don't know i don't know but this poor plant has but been it's just plant you're gonna grab this guy right here yeah, this 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 poor plant, uh, which is our uh, broccoli, our Calabrese broccoli. Um, man, it has it has taken a pounding. Anybody out there with hints on what to do? I mean, this guy looks like a Swiss cheese. It's just horrible. Um, some of our others, we've got the uh, bro uh, the uh, cauliflower. No, what is this? Is this the? We don't know. If it's cauliflower, if it's Brussels sprouts. I think I think this is the Brussels sprouts. I think it's cauliflower. You see how it starts to... I see cauliflower does that too. Okay, so we're not sure what we have. <laughs> All right. But, oh, that's one right here is getting tore up too. Mm -hmm. the one, the it looks like it's got new leaves. Good, good, pretty new leaves coming in just like this one does. And it's got a stupid leaf. I know. It's like crazy. Yeah. 
We've got we got to get that's the that is the one critter that has absolutely decimated our our uh, our garden here is just those cabbage worms, and they're horrible. They're not very nice. So, while we are seeing new growth on the leaves, it, it they are providing, um, bec and I think because we've had a lot of rain, so I'm not sure if the rain is continuing to wash off of our our, our application and therefore giving the worms a. Uh, an opportunity to jump on and munch a little bit, but um, we'll go back and pull another application of BT out and spray these off real good to see if we can't get get some on the leaves because man, this is just uh, it's like a, a massive battle here. Um, our green okra, though, look at our green okra bushes, man, aren't those beautiful? I think the other ones actually have some coming in. Look how big yep. those are. They've got some coming in. Okra. Yep. Yep, they sure do. I see the heads off up in there. Look at there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me. Uh, that's awesome. Pretty. What do you think about that? What a beautiful bird. Beautiful bird. Well, all right. Well, that's the that's the garden update on the green. Somebody had asked me if if uh, uh, how our how our broccoli was looking. I've been kind of moaning and whining and and griping about the 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 way that our broccoli looks, and I'm still moaning and whining and griping because it still looks kind of rough. But we'll keep after it. I mean, you know, that's all we can do, and um, hopefully, we'll get a little bit of a a little reprieve i think i've talked karen into buying a couple of more broccoli at least one more broccoli plant as we've got space for it uh we've, we've got some space for them over here um what do you got oh the jo the mammoth mammoth jalapenos look at there look at there all right that's what we got going on you know all right so anyway, that's that's kind of what's going on with the greens. I, I, I got one more thing I want to show you guys for today's video, and I, I really am excited about it because it's it's something that we we knew was kind of going on uh, around the property. We just didn't know by how much. So let's drive over and take a look at what I'm talking about. So several several months ago, uh, back when we actually, man, we were building on the cabin in the evening, we'd see deer come out and play. And, and it got us to kind of thinking about what kind of deer population do we have in the area and what kind of other predator pressure or other kind of critters were in the local area, right? So my cousin, Mike, Mike is a, man, he is a avid out outdoorsman and a whiz bang when it comes to stuff. He kind of a jack of all trades. He and I were out here working on our internet uh, setup. And that's another video that will be coming very, very soon is how we set up our rural internet. We're still working it. That's why you haven't seen the video. So we're going to try to make sure that we get, uh, do all of our homework, uh, do everything that we know to do in order to create the most optimum uh, signal, at least for here in rural North Alabama, where we don't really have, um, uh, we, we have a cell tower that's within uh, seven miles, I think it is. Um, so we're working through all the dynamics of that and hopefully i'll get to bring that to you as to what the solution was how we optimized it and what the results were but that'll be coming soon but so mike came out and one of the things that he shared with me was uh, an idea that he had on building a couple of pvc deer feeders and so that's exactly what he did he he built uh some of these some of these feeders and put a Y at the bottom of it, um, and then we filled it full of corn. And, and we have had, here's the other one over here. We have had deer coming in left and right. Yeah. We have had raccoons coming in. And by the way, right there's the camera. And so uh, we also put um, a, uh, a block out here for them to enjoy. And uh, here's the camera. <laughs> 
so this sends a live shot to to me and to my cousin Mike. So Mike is somewhere somewhere else right now, and he's about to get a a funny little video. Anyway, uh, so we've had uh, we've had deer uh, a, a fair number of deer. We've had raccoons. Um, we've even had we've had birds of prey out here. Um, and well, let me just, I'll roll some of the, the footage of a few of the pictures of the things that we're getting and, uh, see what you think. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> what did you think? Some awesome specimens. Even the bobcat, pretty healthy cat. Uh, and so, so anyway, we we stay out of this area um, outside of coming in to refill uh, the the feeders. Um, we're gonna let the animals do their thing. I love having the life. Uh, the, uh, the the I love having the wildlife on the property. Um, it creates a healthy ecosystem. And man, I'm all about it. The the deer that you saw in the video or in, in the uh, pictures, uh, they're healthy deer, which is awesome. It's encouraging uh, that we're building a very healthy, you know, uh, management area for our um, for our our uh, wildlife. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's awesome. Love having and and literally, this is less than. I mean. I could probably throw a baseball and hit our cabin. So, you know, we're only, we're only a um, hundred yards as the crow flies from, uh, from our cabin from here. So the wildlife is in here tight and we get them in in droves, uh, both early in the morning and in the evening. So, uh, that's awesome. Will we, will we end up hunting, uh, hunting some of them? Um, we're gonna manage the numbers. We're gonna we're gonna watch and see what happens as uh, more and more deer come into the area, and as we create a healthy uh, a healthy ecosystem. If you remember, some time ago, uh, Greg, our uh, Karen's brother, brought down a batch of Bob Whites, Bob White quail, and we turned them loose here on the property. And so there's no surprise that you see a bobcat, uh, but uh, but the wildlife, we want to replenish the wildlife here in this area, um, particularly things like the like the quail that were native to Alabama f uh, for very, so very long. And now it's starting to thin. They're, we're starting to see, uh, obviously, the decima decimation of their habitat. And so we want to we want to feed into that and put a little bit back in. It may not be much uh, on the grand scheme of things. Uh, but we'll know that we tried to do our part uh, to uh, steward what God has given us. Well, all right. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Um, and uh, we hope you guys have a wonderful week and a very blessed week. Until we see you again the next time, we will see you.